Welcome to our build for the, av for the autonomous vehicle competition for 2013. I'm Jeff Branson with SparkFun's Department of Education. And I'm Brian Huang, the new education engineer here at SparkFun. So Brian and I got to talking when Brian came on and we thought it'd be really interesting to give schools a chance to compete at AVC. In years past, we've seen a lot of people come in from universities and private individuals and bring some great robots, but Brian, being a first person, and myself being a first person also, we thought it'd be great to give high schools a chance and middle schools a chance to build for the competition. Absolutely. So there's a lot of teams out there that are going to have uh, chassis and extra motors and extra parts. Uh, we think that there's a ton of opportunity there. Um, for teams that don't have stuff, uh, we're going to show you guys some parts that we can use that are straight from our catalog uh, to build a robot that'll compete in AVC. Uh, so the course is going to be out on the parking lot of the Boulder Res. It's going to be about 180 feet by 160 feet. Um, there are four corners around here for which you'll earn 25 points for going around each of those corners. And the goal is to traverse the entire course in under five minutes. And so that's going to be one of our key design constraints is to make sure that our robot is fast enough and able to traverse around an outdoor parking lot um, in under five minutes or 300 seconds. So uh, at SparkFun here, we have a lot of smaller robots that we carry. And we looked at all of these different platforms. We have here the little mini bot. We have this from Parallax, the bow bot. Um, and then uh, this is the magician's chassis with uh, a new board that we're just about to release here. We looked at all these designs and we noticed that they're uh, probably too small to access this 680 foot course. So we looked to the Rover 5 chassis and the Rover 5 chassis has a lot of flexibility to it. The wheels you see here are non-standard so we'll talk a little bit about why we chose those wheels here in a minute. And then um, some additional boards here that we're going to talk about and how we program those. So in this box are all the parts you're going to need to build your robot. The most important thing, of course, is your SparkFun red board. Then we've got the Rover 5 board. That's our motor controller. The Rover 5 comes with a uh, six cell AA battery holder. We're gonna replace this just so that we get a little bit more oomph with our robot. Unfortunately, when we tested the treads, we had some numbers problems. These are small diameter wheels, so regardless how fast these motors go, this thing is gonna be limited by the circumference of these wheels. So we had to do something. This chassis is already built with fixed motors and fixed gears, and so we couldn't change that. Um, but one nice thing about the Rover 5 is that we can swap out the wheels. We looked at these big knobby wheels. These guys have 120 millimeter diameter and gives us about two and a half to three feet per second, which clears the entire course in about 270 seconds. We've got a couple of cut pieces of masonite, and these are gonna stand for the platform on our robot. We went through and we measured all of all of the holes on here and we created drawing packages for all of these so that um, you don't have to measure all these things out. Um, you can print out our drawings and uh, print them one for one and just drill right through. So before we put the board on, we're going to have to clip the ties on there and separate the wires. You got to be careful that we keep the right side separate from the left side. And there's going to be two wires, a red and a black, for each of the motors. There's four motors on this platform. And then there's going to be four sets of control lines for the encoders. So the baseboard, the large board, will go on the bottom here. And it's designed to match exactly with the four holes on the bottom plate. We also made another feature here where we put the holes off center. And this gives us a little room to put some additional parts and sensors, but also gives us an end to the board and shows what direction is forward on the robot. The second plate is about half the size of the base plate and there's a hole pattern here that matches exactly to the red board and this will sit just slightly above about an inch higher to give us a little room below it to stick the battery in. We need to mount the Rover 5 motor driver board on here and the way that we've done that is to run these screws up through the bottom through a set of 440 insets and then capped finally by a set of 440 insets. We're going to add two additional standoffs. These are uh, three quarter inch standoffs for the top board. We also have to mount the red board on the top plate before we mount that one down. My final thing is to fish through my encoder wires. So we're just going to use the outside channel, so channels one and four. Now these are color coded, so red for VCC, black for ground, and then there's two encoder channels on here. They're quadrature encoders, uh, white and yellow, and it doesn't matter which one you plug in. The very last thing we have to do is connect the motors. And the nice thing about the Rover 5 motor driver is that the connectors are already on here. So all we had to do is fish these through and snap them on. So we've closed this out. This is it for this episode of ABC Robot Build. On the next one, we'll wire it up, get it rolling. Great, thanks for joining us.